Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I wanna to go through some EV practice with you. Now, I've done a lot of EV videos in the past. I've done one on basic EV, I've done another on advanced EV, and this is kind of going to practice using both of those formulas and concepts. The whole goal with doing this kind of off-table practice is that you can start to train your brain to make these estimations more precisely and more automatically, which is going to give you a massive, massive leg up at the table. Think about how much you might dislike math right this moment. Your opponents hate math that much more. So if you can start developing edges in math, even though you might not like it, you get better with it, you get stronger with it, and because poker is a math game, this is extremely important stuff for your bottom line at the end of the day. So without further ado, let's go through some exercises from the Poker Math and Preflop Workbook and have some fun practicing putting EV to use. All right, so let's flip over to page 140 of the Poker Math and Preflop Workbook, and we're not gonna turn this into a full EV lesson. I've done videos on the basic EV formula and the advanced EV formula in the past. I'll leave links for those in the description box. But if you just need a quick refresher on EV, the EV formula, the basic one, is percentage L times money L minus percentage L times money L. So essentially, how often you expect to win the pot times how much you expect to win when you do win it, minus how often you expect to lose the pot times how much money you expect to lose when you do in fact lose the pot. And percentage W and percentage L always equal 100%, right? If I'm going to win the pot 10% of the time, inherently I'm going to lose it the other 90% of the time. Very simple. So this runs you through, this is just kind of a prelim chapter in the workbook, it runs you through the formula, shows you kind of how to do one of the problems, and let's get into it and do a couple together. So we're going to do number three and four in the easy section. So let's start with that now. All right, so starting with question three, the stacks are $100 and you invest $5 on a preflop set mine, expecting to win your opponent's stack when you flop your set. So what is the EV of set mining here? Keeping in mind that you flop a set or better 12% of the time. Well, all, all of the information we need to fill out this formula down below is right here. So how often are we going to win? Again, percentage W. Well, we're gonna flop that set or better 12% of the time, so 12%. If we know percentage W, we always know percentage L, right? 100% minus Minus this gets us this, so 100 minus 12 equals 88%, easy peasy. When we do win, how much are we winning? Well, we're winning their stack, right? $100. That's the way that this question was set up. And when we lose, how much are we losing? Well, we're investing $5, and if we don't flop our set, we get out of there. So we're just gonna lose that five bucks when we do lose the pot. So if we were to actually solve this out right this moment, this all comes out to $7.60. And if you're looking at this and you're like, well, I'm not a human calculator, maybe I can set up this formula in my head, but how the heck do I like get this $7.60 pretty quickly. I just kind of use very, very simple numbers. So this 12 is pretty close to 10, which inherently means this is pretty close to 90. So let's just say what's 10% of 100? Well, that's $10. If we take 90% times $5, well, that comes out to 450. So 10 minus 450 gets us to what? Six and a half? And that's not exactly 760, but it's pretty darn close. This, we could actually do kind of a very similar thing if we wanted to use more correct numbers, right? 12% of 100 is $12 minus this, which was, again, going to be pretty close to 450, so 12 minus 450 gets us to 750, and again, we're right in that ballpark. As usual, a little bit of practice goes a long way towards being able to estimate this far better and also far quicker, but this gets us the answer for question number three in this workbook. All right, so let's move on to question number four. So the stacks are $100 and you invest $10 on a preflop set mine, expecting to win your opponent's stack if you flop a set. So what is the EV of set mining? And of course, we're still gonna flop that set or better 12% of the time. So percentage W is still 12%. Percentage L, of course, is still gonna be 100 minus that 12, so 88%. When we win, we're still winning their $100 stack. That's all well and good. And remember here, we don't add our stack in here as well. It's not like we're going to win $200 right their 100 plus our 100 makes a 200 total total pot that's not the way this works we're only winning their stack in this situation our money doesn't get factored in our stack size doesn't get factored in when we're doing this kind of calculation and the money l so what are we losing the times we do lose well instead of five dollars like the previous one in this one we're investing ten dollars on a prefop set mine so we would lose ten dollars this time so real quick take your best guess here just eyeballing it do you think this is going to be plus ev or negative EV, take a moment, think about it. 
Excellent. Hopefully you got your answer. And if you guessed plus EV, you are 100% correct. This is positive to the tune of $3.20. So if you did get this right, please like this video, help other people find videos like this, and let me know if you like videos like this and more mathy kind of stuff in the future. So again, this is another one that we can eyeball pretty quickly, right? This 12% times 100, we know that comes out to $12. And this one is also pretty darn simple at 880. So 12 minus 880 gets us to 320. Even if we were to round these numbers, say 10% and 90% instead, we can still eyeball this. And again, sometimes just eyeballing it and being able to say, yeah, this is going to be plus EV or no, this is probably not going to be plus EV is very, very helpful. And just for the record, there is a full answer key with this workbook so we can proof all of our stuff right in this situation question number three is plus 760 and by the way the answer key just rounds and here we have plus three dollars or 320 here perfect and also you see that the work is spelled out for you so that way if you have any questions on what was the exact formula where did those numbers go this can be very very helpful and by the way if you're looking for a tool in order to be able to do these things a little bit quicker and on your own then one thing you can do is download my spreadsheet pack. It includes a basic EV spreadsheet. And again, it has all these numbers. You just pop them right in, right? The money W in this situation is $100. How often do we win? 12, which automatically completes that for you. And when we lose, how much do we lose? We lose those 10 bucks, perfect EV plus 320, just like the answer we got here. So we know we did everything correctly. So one thing that should be pretty clear at this point is that this is overly simplified, right? Because in the real world, when we flop our set, we're not going to get paid off 100% of the time. Would that be excellent? For sure. But there are plenty of times when our opponent's going to have ace-king, we're going to flop our set, they're going to have ace-high, and we're not going to get a full payoff. And that's going to change the EV massively. So let's continue this but expand the formula a little bit and get into more of the moderate and advanced EV formula stuff. Again, there's a full chapter in the workbook that explains this and I'll leave a link in the description box for the advanced EV formula which is this very scary thing or at least scary at first glance once you work with it a little bit it gets easier and in that video it'll show you kind of what all these variables are how to use them but for now we're just going to skip right ahead and continue this set mining conversation by doing number two so in number two very similar to what we just did stacks are 100 bucks we're investing ten dollars on a pre-flop set mine but instead of getting a full payoff every single time we flop our set we're only expecting to win their stack half of the the time that we flop our set. So assuming we don't get paid off after hitting, we're still winning a 650 pot. So at this point, what is the EV of set mining here? And by the way, this entire thing is set up for you based upon this. So that's F times the current pot, C is the continuance, and then again we have this similar thing, percentage W times money W, and also percentage L times money L. Again, all of this is explained in the book and also in that video, but for now, I'm just going to assume that you understand that, and we're going to start plugging things in and figuring out what is the EV in this situation. So again, take a moment and think about whether or not you think this set mine is plus EV or negative EV with this slight change in variable. So in the previous question that we did, we noticed that there were essentially two branches, right? How much we make when we win and how much we make when we lose. But this one now has three branches because we could win and win 650. We could win and win the full 100 or we can lose the pot and we lose our $10 investment. So let's run it with that in mind. So let's just do the full payoff first. So how often is that going to happen? Well, 12% of the time we flop our set are better, we're only getting paid off off half of that, so 6% overall. And how much do we win when that happens? We win that full $100, easy peasy. And then down below, we can also win that 6% of the time, right? The other half that we flop our set, but this time we're not going to get paid off. We're only going to win that $6.50 pot, so $6.50. And then we have our final branch, and that's going to be 100% minus this, right? Minus the 6, minus the 6. So again, we're back to 88% in how often we lose. And how much money are we losing when we do lose? We're losing that $10. So if if you estimated that this was going to be plus EV, unfortunately that is not correct. This is actually negative roughly $2.40. And this is a spot where again we can just quickly eyeball it real quick, right? This collectively comes out to positive $6. This is going to come out to what? Uh, 
about 40, 50 cents, something like that, pretty darn small. And this, of course, is still gonna be our negative 8.8. .8. So add that all through, and we're up to negative 241. And if we check the answer key real quick, scrolling down to page 148, question number two, again, negative two bucks. This just rounds things and shows you the entire work, so that way you know exactly where each number was supposed to go in this formula. So for what it's worth, I do suggest doing at least some of these by hand. That way you can start kind of understanding where the shortcuts are and you're going to start building your intuition. And especially if you haven't done a lot of hardcore math in a while, maybe since school, this might be a really, really good time to do a few by hand. But once you kind of have that down, if you want to save some time, you can always use one of my free tools. This one again is in that same spreadsheet pack. This is the complex EV one. And you notice that it's set up in a similar structure with that F and C and current Pot, and then also the numbers we're familiar with, money L, percentage W, all that kind of fun stuff down here. So if we were to plug this into the spreadsheet, well, the F is going to be that 6% for how often we're winning this pot, kind of the big one uncontested. So 6% of the time we're winning that $100 stack, easy peasy. And then when we do win, how much are we winning on the smaller side of things? So 650, when we lose, we're losing our $10 set mine. And how often are we winning this pot? Well, we're winning at 6%, which inherently means that we're losing it the other nine and again we get that EV of negative 250. And again, there's some rounding going on here, and this one's a little bit more precise than the heavy, heavy rounds in the answer key and also here. But again, same ballpark, and what's really important is that we're able to understand, is this going to be good or is this going to be bad? Right? We notice there's a big difference between the answer we got right here, which is negative, compared to when we did this very same kind of question, but with simplified responses where we're getting paid off 100% of the time when we flop our set versus this 50% of the time, you notice how quickly this can go from plus EV to negative EV and being able to estimate and eyeball, hey, is this going to net me profit in the long run or is this likely going to lose me money in the long run gives you a massive, massive edge when it comes to finding good plays and things you should be doing both pre-flop and post-flop and also things you should be avoiding, things that are going to cost you money in the long run. Now, truthfully, in real time, I'm never doing calculations at this kind of depth. I just don't have the mental brain power to do so, but I am I'm always estimating EV and trying to get my estimation skills stronger and stronger. And the only way I can do that is by doing this kind of stuff off table and in between sessions. So that way my brain can start doing this more automatically. Because as always in poker, our goal is to add as many plus EV plays into our playbook, remove as many negative EV plays from our playbook as possible, and always striving to find the optimal or the most plus EV line possible. And the good news is that most players will never do this kind of work. But because poker is a game of math, we need to put in this kind of work off table in order to make these estimations better and better. And especially if we're looking to really increase our edges against regs, right? It's easy to increase our edge against a fish, right? Just play better than they do. That's not too difficult. But other players who are playing similar to our level, if we can get stronger with the math while they're not getting any stronger with theirs, we can really start to put a massive delta between our edge and their their edge, and that's really important at the end of the day for increasing our win rate. So if you want to continue building this skill set between sessions, I would definitely suggest checking out and grabbing your copy of the Poker Math and Preflop Workbook. There are plenty more drills just like the ones we did today, and lots and lots of others. Plus there's a full answer key to make sure you're getting everything correct. And given the confusing nature of EV calculations, I've also included the full work for these sections and the answer key, so that way you can see where you went wrong with any incorrect answers. You can grab your copy of the workbook at splitsuit.com slash prefop to start refining your technical skill set today. A little work in this area goes a long way towards improving your technical proficiency both on and off the felt. Again, you can visit splitsuit.com slash prefop to learn more, or you can always grab the paperback version directly from Amazon. Whichever version works for you is totally, totally fine. Just make sure to make it your goal to complete a few pages per day. That way you can actually start to see really solid improvement, and you'll also build a very, very solid study habit, which is very important for making improvement and progressing on a consistent basis. And as always, if you have any questions, be it about the workbook or EV or anything else, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I look forward to helping you out. I hope you really enjoy the workbook. And as always, good luck out there and happy grinding.